I do too. And if you love me as much as I love you, then nothing can break. I love in two. Now turn to the one you didn't want to look at the first time and say, neighbor, it's good to see you too. It is a blessing just once more and again to be in God's house. With the people of God, with a mind made to give God the praise. There's nothing like coming together with your brothers and sisters in Christ, lifting up the name of our Lord and Savior. Everybody got something. Nobody in here ain't got nothing going on in your life. Everybody got something going on, but you leave all of that on the outside, and you come on the inside with a mind made up. I know I got all this going on on the outside, but this is the Lord's day. This is the Lord's time, and I got to give the Lord what's due to him, and that's my praise. And God is so worthy of it, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. The name of the Lord is worthy to be praised. Tell me how I went to urgent care yesterday, and when they checked my blood pressure, it was 170 over 155. They say, son, how you in here talking to us like this? I say, I don't know. It must be Jesus. It must be Jesus. You better preach. I don't know. It must be Jesus. And you can be walking around here. And, and let me tell you, man, uh, up until the moment, man, feeling fine. Stuff that sneak up on you every now and then. You know, whatever. But God, when God has his hand on you, nothing that the devil tries to do will work. Nothing that the devil sets up to do will work when God got his hand on you. And you can tell the difference. You can look in a crowd of people and you can tell the difference between the ones that God got his hands on and the ones that the devil got his hands on. Because when stuff gets to happening, God got a way of setting that person on the outside and letting them know, hey, this one right here, that one right there belongs to me. I got my hand on them. Take your hand off of them, devil. And I'm just so glad, I'm just so glad that I serve a God who's able. I serve a God who's not only able, but he's wonderful. He is an amazing God. And let me tell you, if you would just live faithfully for him, God will blow your mind. If you would just live faithfully to him and serve God with your whole heart, mind, soul, and body, you won't even be aware of a lot of stuff that's going on around you because you're so focused on what God is doing in your life. I ain't got time to be worried about that. I'm looking for my next blessing. I'm, I'm looking for what God is getting ready to do in my life. Amen. He's so worthy of our praise. I'm, amen. Like, as Brother Coffee said, I'm about lost my way back to Alabama. I'm going to have to use my GPS, you know, to get home, you know, whatever. But uh, uh, I have enjoyed myself here thoroughly this week. We had an awesome time at the lectureship. It was a blessing. Glad that I was able to participate and be a part of that. And then on yesterday, we had a great time again with the youth rally on yesterday. That was very beneficial. And we are praying for our kids that they're going back to school and hoping that they will have a successful school year. And remember, you are nobody's follower. You are a leader for Jesus Christ. And everywhere that you go, you set an example for Christ and let it be a good example. Anybody come to hear a word from the Lord this morning? Now, I know one of my sisters, I'm not going to call her name. She said, I love to preach out the Old Testament. And I do, but it's, I, so, so I'm going to appease her this morning. I'm going to give her a New Testament sermon, all right? All right, Matthew, Matthew chapter 20. Matthew chapter number 20. Matthew chapter number 20, and we're going to start at verse number 20. 
and read down to verse number 23. The grass withers and the flower thereof fadeth away, but the word of God shall stand forever. Matthew chapter 20, and we're going to begin at verse number 20 and conclude at verse number 23. And I ask that you read along with me. Verse number 20, you got it? Say, I got it. Then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children with her sons, worshiping him and desiring a certain thing of him. And he said unto her, What wilt thou? She said unto him, Grant that these my two sons may sit, the one at thy right hand and the other at thy left in thy kingdom. But Jesus answered and said, You know not what you ask. Are ye able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of? and to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with, they say unto him, we are able. And he said unto them, ye shall drink indeed of my cup, and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with, but to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of my Father. Father. Amen. Shall we go to our Heavenly Father in prayer? Dear wise and gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you on today. Father, we come before your throne just thankful at another opportunity that we have to come and feast at the table of your word. Father, now I ask that you would anoint these lips of clay. Hide me behind your glorious cross, Father, that nothing that I say, my flesh can take no glory, but that all glory will be given unto you. Throw your weight around us on this morning, O Lord, and be with us this morning. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't do good. For the wrong reason. I can get an invitation right there. Somebody, there was somebody got their sermon already. Don't do good for the wrong reason. This, this woman came to Jesus with her two sons. Her sons were the sons of Zebedee, as the scripture tells us. You remember Zebedee, don't you? He was the chief executive officer, you would say, of a fishing corporation. I believe I could have had a job with Zebedee back in the day. And I I do not say that lightly nor slightly. He He had a business. He was an entrepreneur. He was successful. The Bible says, and another verse says, that he had servants, which means that he was an affluent person in his time. And she was the wife of an elite, charismatic, distinguished diplomat of the community. And still, she had to come to Jesus. I don't care how much money you make, you still got to come to Jesus. I don't care what color you are, you still got to come to Jesus. I don't care if you matriculated to the upper echelon of the greatest society that you can get in. Guess what? You still got to come to Jesus. So there are some things that you got to get out of the way if you're going to be able to get to Jesus. So my problem is not that she came to Jesus because I understand that you can go to him when you can't go to nobody else. In case, in case you're, you're watching this via live stream on this morning and you've never been to Jesus and you're hearing this message, I want to know, going to let you know that you can go to him and you can ask God, you can pray to God and you need to find someone that knows about the script. You can't just go to anybody because you got a lot of folks around here that are telling you a little bit of this and a little bit of that. You got to make sure that what they're telling you is found in the word of God. So here it is, she came to him and she must have understood something about her needs. It, you know, it's a dangerous thing sometimes to let people know what you're standing in need of. You can't let everybody know what you need. Because sometimes when people know what you need, they'll use that against you. That's why David said, if I was hungry, I wouldn't tell you. Because sometimes if people knew that you were hungry, they weigh bread in your face. See, so she came to Jesus, you see, in case you don't understand God, if it were possible for God to have a weakness, I believe it would be worship. God loves worship. He desires our worship. He's omniscient. He's all-seeing. He's an all-knowing God. He said he is seeking worshipers. And I don't, I don't know how this, this businesswoman, this, this first lady of this corporation knew about this need for worship. But when she came to him, she worshipped him. And 
Maybe she worshipped him because she seen the Canaanite woman worship. Maybe she worshipped him because she seen the woman whose daughter was grievously vexed with the devil worship her way into a healing. Maybe she stopped by the tomb of the Gardens and seen a man possessed with demons come and fall at the feet of this man and worship him. I don't know how she came to worship, but she came to worship him. It's a dangerous thing for people to know your weaknesses. Because if they know your weaknesses, they'll give you what you need, but they won't mean it. If people know how bad you need it, they'll do the right thing, but it will be for the wrong reason. And when people do it just because they know you need it, they get tired real easy. Have you ever had somebody who was just doing things to placate you, just to get you out of their face, you know, just to get you going on? They weren't really concerned about you. They didn't really care about you, but they just knew that you liked that, and they just did it just to get by. See, she worshiped, but while she was worshiping him, she couldn't do it long before she said, okay, I'm going to give you a little bit of worship. But you see them two boys back there? They're my boys. And and I want you to do something. Since I'm going to worship you, I want you to do something for my boys. I'm going to bow before you, but all right, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to become a member of the Lord's church. But you know, all my trials are coming up and I don't want to go through any more trials. I don't want to suffer any more affliction. Lord, if I'm going to serve you, Lord, I want you to do this for me. God does not operate according to what we want and what we desire. When it comes to worship, it's not what we desire and what we feel. It's all about God. So here it is. See, that's what's killing us as as people, as creatures, because we have to keep pumping and pumping and pumping, trying to motivate people. But you can't motivate people who've had bad motives. You will work yourself to death trying to please people that got bad motives. And let me tell you, they will be the ones that the scripture says appear to be sheep. But they're actually wolves in sheep's clothing. You, you, you will work yourself to death. Preacher, we will preach ourselves into a grave yeah. trying to please people that have bad motives. You will have a nervous breakdown. You can't understand. How can I pray for this person and they seem to be all right on Wednesday night, but they tie back up by Sunday morning? It's because they never did it for the right reason. You see... Manipulators do the right thing. They do it for the wrong reason, and they start it. Pretty soon, they'll have their own agenda, and the agenda's coming out. How many of you know that your agenda will always slip out? I don't care how you cover up what you're really trying to do. Eventually, your, your, what you really want, what you really desire it, it's eventually going to find its way out. That's why the old folk tell you, hey, child, everything done in the dark going to come to the light. Because anything that you do, sooner or later, it's going to find its way out. That's why I live in the light. Ain't no darkness around here. I live in the light. Everything you see is what you get. I ain't got what, 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 what my dear said, what I got to hide for. So here it is, manipulators, manipulators, they would do the right thing for the wrong reason. And when they do it, eventually, what they really wanted is going to slip out. You know, her slipped out when she said, you know, I got these two boys back there. And and, and you're going to need somebody on your right side, and you're going to need somebody on your left. And it might as well be my two sons. (laughs) I wouldn't even even bother the fact that these boys were grown. I won't even bother the fact that she has mama them to death. Yeah. I won't even go there. I won't even go into all the women who manipulate their grown children, mouth all in their marriage, mouth all in their business, never allowed them to grow up, never allowed him to be a man because mama's still running everything. I'm not going to bother that because you're messing up. They, they get no bed. Tell your wife how to cook. He like it like this, like his aunt. You know, he like his potatoes cooked like this. I ain't going to bother that. That's manipulation. That's the spirit of manipulation. What do you mean? It is, 
Here's a problem with manipulators. It's tight, but it's right. Manipulators, manipulators always try to bypass. Bypass what? Bypass the process for progress. Want to get somewhere quick. So manipulators always try to find an easy way to get to where they're trying to go. I, I want you to get this in your heart. If you don't get anything else that I say this morning, there are no shortcuts in God. You got to go all the way with God. Ain't no shortcuts. Ain't no, no turning back with Jesus anyway. The scripture said that no man that has put his hand to the gospel apply and look back is fit for the kingdom. If you found Jesus, what you looking back for? You left that behind for a reason. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus and the prize that is laid before you, and that is heaven. Amen. There are no shortcuts in God. I know I'm going to mess with somebody now, but that's what I, I want to do because we've been running up in all kinds of prayer lines. Calling all kind of folk on BT at 3 and 4 o'clock in the morning. Saying we want miracle spring water and that we want prayer cloths. Thinking that there's an easy way to get something. I know what the scriptures say, but it might be some realness to what they say. You know, this man been on TV all these years and folk been coming on there saying they been here and stuff. You don't know that woman threw that cane across that stage because he gave her $200 when she walked in the If Jesus, if Jesus would have spoke in modern terms to his woman, I believe he would have said something like this. Stop tripping. Chill out. Stop tripping. Be cool. Tell somebody to say stop tripping. Stop tripping. Yeah, they needed to hear that because a lot of us tripping this morning. A lot of us tripping over stuff that we need to be stepping over. Some stuff that don't even need it. Some stuff that we could have got rid of a long time ago. The little thing that used to be an anthill now it's turned into a mountain because we wanted to look over the issue and not address it. Anything that you just let sit there and fester, after a while when you come back, it's going to be worse than it was in the beginning. That's why when you figure something out, go ahead and deal with it. If there's an issue between you and a friend, go ahead and address the issue. Because if you don't address it, after a while, you're around here mad, I'm around here mad, I'm doing this and that. And all the while, all it took was me coming to you and saying, hey, what's over is done with. I'm here today. I still love you. We still cool. Let's move on. A lot of stuff that we tripping over, we could have been stepped over a long time ago. So, so he said, stop tripping because there are no shortcuts in success. That there are no shortcuts. You got to go through what you got to go through. And I know we don't always like what we got to go through. And we don't always understand what we have to go through. But just understand that God knows exactly why he's taking you through what it is that he's taking you through. And let me tell you, when you're a child of God, you'll walk through muddy waters. And when you come out on the other side, you won't even have mud between your toes. When you are a child of God, you'll walk through the fiery furnaces of life. And you'll come out in the hell on your head. Won't even be sin. How is that that I can go through sex things and come out with a smile on my face? Because this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. And the world cannot take it away. So here it is, you said, you got to go through whatever it is that you got to go through. Let me tell you, church, everything that you go through is not going to go be over with overnight. There are some storms that you're going to go through and it's going to take a while for the storm to pass. But just know the same Jesus that got you through an overnight trouble is the same Jesus that'll get you through some extended trouble in your life if you just trust in him. So you got to move when God says move. That's, that's our problem. We get stubborn with God. God trying to take some stuff away from us. Now I want to hold on to this just a little while longer. God wants us to leave certain situations. Now I, I want to stay here a little while longer. And the reason why we want to stay there is because we've gotten comfortable. That's the biggest problem with us. You know what we don't like, Deacon? You know, we don't like change. You change to something. Oh, no. Oh, it been like that since my mom and dad was here. Yeah. Oh. My daddy laid that brick right there. He did that. No, we don't. No, no, you don't do that with that. No. And, I, and we had great discussions in the relationship about that. That you have, you have to weigh the pros and cons of everything that you do. But some, somebody said like this, it's a bad wind that don't never change. If you are the same person that you were 20 years ago, that ain't nothing for you to celebrate. 
every day, every week, every month, every year of your life, you ought to be coming more and more closer and closer to God. You ought, to, you ought not settle to be basic, ought not settle for what you have right now, but every opportunity that you have, you ought to be reaching forward to being greater than, than ever before and becoming more in Jesus Christ. So here it is, he says, and we got to understand, if, if we don't first of all lay ourselves before God and our problems before God, how can he ever work them out? God does not make us do anything. We know that. God, God, God doesn't come up and hold us up and make us do anything. He said, whosoever will, let them come. You got to make up in your mind. And let me tell you, and I know some of y'all, maybe it's your children, family members, or whoever, and you're just tired of praying with them. You're tired of trying to teach the Bible to them, tired of trying to study with them because it seemed like they won't listen, seem like they're not going to obey. You've done your job. You planted the seed of the word of God in their life. And let me tell you, it takes an individual experience for that person to come to the conclusion that they need Jesus in their life. You can tell them about what God is done for you all day long, but until they hit rock bottom and they need God for themselves, they'll never recognize it. So there, there, there are no shortcuts to what God has for us. And most of the time, when you think about, I'll get back to this, when you think about manipulators, you think of people who got evil motives. You think of people who got evil intentions and, and, and there, there are people who got evil motives on your job. Folk got evil motives. In your house, folk had evil motives. In the church, folk got evil motives. Everywhere people have evil motives. And there are people who will run up in your face and grin at you. Like a Chester cat, you know what they talk about? They never really liked you. Never really loved you. Never really wanted anything good to happen to you. They were just... Always, you know, all while you were eating good, dinner, taking them out to eat and doing this and doing that. Y'all was buddy buddy, but now that things have changed, you know, it's a different story. I, I, I know you don't believe that, but people will change like the wind. I, I know y'all never experienced that, but people will flip like a script on you in a minute. And you'll be wondering like, man, I thought we was just, no, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know. You'll have to for as somebody, somebody older would say, live a little while to experience that, but you experience that even at a young age. You will experience that. High schoolers, elementary, middle school, you all go through that. And older as well as young people, people that seem to be one way, when in actuality they are a different way. And all the while they are clothing themselves to get you to stay by them just so they can get what they need out of you. Drain every bit of what they need to get out of you. And then after they have drained you dry and they have no more use for you, they will throw you down like a piece of trash on the side of the road and act like they never knew you. But I know a man that will stick closer than a brother. I know somebody that will go with you not some of the way, but all the way. And his name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. So, so manipulators, here it is, but you don't have to be evil to be a manipulator. You don't. You don't have to be evil to be a manipulator. You can be misguided and be a manipulator. What do you mean, preacher? Uh, a young man came up to me a few weeks ago and he said, he said, preacher, uh, I was preaching at a church. He said, preacher, he said, man, I just love your ministry, man. And he said, he said, you need an armor bearer. That's okay. He said, yeah, he said, man, you, you carrying your own Bible and, and carrying your iPad. And so he said, somebody be doing that for you. And you driving down the road, going here and doing that. You need somebody. I can do that. You know, I can drive for you. And, and after a while, what he really wanted to say came out. He said, and then when you ain't at your church, I can come preach for you. Hello. See, it started out good. Like I wanted to be of help to you. Like I wanted to be of some type of service to you, but after a while, my real intention is going to find its way. That's all you got to do. When folks start talking, let them keep on talking, and after a while, they're going to tell on themselves. That's why folks get to talk. I, I be in conversations with people, and we can be at a table, and we'll be talking. They say, why are you ain't talking? I'm listening. <laughs> I'm big about that, especially when I go out with preachers and stuff. You know, I, I sit back and I listen. Hey, you ain't finna go back and say, Tremonte said nothing. <laughs> and, 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 after, and, and after, because after a while, when you get to listening, 
you, you will really learn a lot about people through conversation. And, 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 and stop trying to put your two cents in there. Let's, let's sit back and listen sometimes. Observe some things and some stuff that you never noticed before. You'll notice it if you just take time to listen. Take time. Pay attention to the little stuff that happens. Everything that people do, they do it for a reason. Everything that people say, they do it for a reason. People have a regular schedule of doing stuff for a reason, and there's a reason behind it. And just pay attention to that. And, and when people get to talking, just like that young man, I said, I said, I thank you, but I said, I've been driving this long. I can keep on driving. Uh, it ain't hurting my hand or my arm for me to pick up a Bible or iPad. I, 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 and, I, and we've gotten so caught up in that. Preachers have gotten so caught up in that. The glitz and the glamour of religion. Uh, I, like, I like nice clothes. There ain't nothing wrong with that. But everything got to be this, got to be top of the line. Uh, for those of you that, you know uh, the lady by the name of Juanita Bynum. I'm sure you've heard her name before. Um, she tra traveled the world preaching and stuff, you know, and um, came out about her um, some stuff a weeks ago talking about um, if you want her to come preach at your church, you got to put down a minimum deposit of $5,000. After you put down the $5,000 deposit, you have to buy six First class plane tickets for her and her entourage. After that, you got to go to the best hotel in your city, get a presidential suite for Dr. Vinyl. Make sure that the church credit card is tied to the hotel so all room service that Dr. Vinyl needs will be charged to the church, as well as four, as well as four other rooms for her entourage. Then when you get to the church, if she has to raise the offering, it's 70 30. She gets 70%, she gives the church 30%. If the church raises the offering, she gets 60%, the church gets 40%. And Brother Coffee, we can't even get a two piece from churches. <laughs> Jesus himself. Wasn't riding around on the finest stallions that they had in the time back in the day. Jesus himself said, I came not to be served. He's saying, but I came to be of service. And anybody I will say, if you are in the business of saving souls or you are in the business of serving the Lord for any other reason than glorifying God, you're in the wrong reason. You're in the wrong, re you're in the wrong business for the wrong reason. Let me tell you, when the glitz and glamour have gone, your desire for serving God will go away with it. And what do you have then? But I want to tell y'all today, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock I stand, all of the ground. How did I get there? But it's good. Oh. He came up and said, he said, now, now I don't think that the guy was, I don't think he was evil. He was just misguided. Because nobody wants anybody to do anything for them without having an ulterior motive. So you, you don't want anybody around you like that. Don't appoint nobody like that. Don't put nobody in position like that. No, don't move nobody up like that because the minute they get on your bad side, the very person that the day before was saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, will be passing out the petitions for crucify him. Crucify him. So here it is. Jesus says, can you stand to be baptized? with the baptism that I am baptized with. Hold it right here. We're not talking about water. He hasn't been baptized in water. This is not water. It is a water, it's a, it is a picture of what water is going to do. Water is a metaphorical illustration of the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And he said, woman, you're trying to get your sons to reign with me but they haven't suffered with me. And so many people want to come around when you reigning, but all the while you were suffering, they were nowhere to be found. Don't let anybody reign with you until they suffer with you. This is, this is the kind of the, a message that, because we got to teach, because if you walk with God, I want to let you know you're going to suffer. 
If you want to be a Christian and you claim the name of Christ, you are going to suffer. But the Bible says that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord shall deliver them out of them all. We have to teach that. We have to let us know because so many people feel like that when they become a child of God, everything is just supposed to be all right. Life is just supposed to be a crystal staff. After I become a Christian, I ain't going to have to cry no more. I ain't going to have to worry no more. I ain't going to have to stress no more. Let me tell you, it's going to be turned up after you become a Christian. It's going to be elevated after you become a child of God because the devil really didn't have to work that hard when you belonged to him. He just had to keep you comfortable where you are. But now that you're serving God, he really got to send out the big dogs after you to try to get you to doubt God. And, and here it is, somebody that's not as strong as they need to be. I've been serving God. I've been going to church and going to Bible class, doing this and that. Why I got to go through this? People out there on the street seem like everything with them is all right. Seem like they're doing good. Look what they're driving. Look what they're living in. Never measure how a person's life is. Based on what they got. You don't know who they done tricked, swindled, and bamboozled to get what they got in life. Be glad with what God has blessed you with and contend with it. And guess what? Stop being jealous and grievous at other stuff and God will bless you with more if you trust him. We ought to look into the hills from where our help and our blessings come from. I'm not dependent on no government, no state or local officials. I'm dependent on Jesus Christ. My Bible says that the government is upon his shoulders. He is the highest authority in our land, and he is the one that we ought to look to, that we ought to depend on, if we expect to make it in this life. We got to depend on Jesus. So, so as I said, we got to be willing to suffer in this life. Suffer before you get the rain. You got to go through some things in life. Why is it that we have to go through? Because in the midst of our going through, what is happening is our faith is built. Our strength is built. Certain things that we would not have been able to handle before we went through the fire. Now that we came out the fire, man, we in the corner, we ready to do battle. Because now I've been through the fire and I've seen God walk with me through the fire. And when I came out on the other side, God reached his arms out and he grabbed me. And he let me know, child, just like I had you in that fire. When the next fire comes up, I got you again. We got to trust him. And go through it with a smile. Tell your neighbor, go through it. Go through it and stop trying to shortcut your way through life. Stop trying to take the easy way. Go through it. You got to press your way. They came up with the acronym for push. Pray until something happens. When ain't nothing happening, pray. Seems like things have gotten worse, pray. Seems like things have gotten worse than worse, pray. Seems like things have gotten worse than worse than worse than worse, pray. Pray until something happens. I believe it was Jacob that wrestled with that angel all night long. Y'all remember that sermon? Let's get ready to rumble. You remember that, don't you? David, he wrestled with that angel all night. He said, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. And that's the kind of attitude that you got to have. Lord, I'm not going to stop praying. I'm not going to stop asking until you bless me. Quickly, quickly, I want to show you all the scripture. Go read Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4 and verse number 19. Matthew chapter 4 and verse number 19. We see what this problem, this woman's problem is in chapter 4 and verse number 19. You got it? He said unto them, this is Jesus getting started in his ministry on earth. And he said unto them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. And going on from this, he saw other two brethren, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in a ship with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets, and he called them, and they immediately left the ship and their father and followed him. Here's our problem. They had started the business. The husband was running it. The sons were being mentored by it. They were next in line to be successors in their father's domain. Y'all follow what I'm saying? And Jesus came in and messed up their plans. The fly needed to hear the gospel too. So. <laughs> Jesus came in 
and he messed up their plans that they had. So here it is. They had started working. Thank you, brother. Jesus came in and messed it up. And can I tell you that obeying God will mess up your plans. You had your life all figured out. It's going to be like this and it's going to be like that. I'm going to be like this. How is we going to go? And the Lord came along and scrambled your eggs. Manipulation gets in the church when you start giving up stuff to walk with God. And now you're walking with God, and you didn't get it back, but the Lord sent, I, I, I believe we have to understand this. God will never take anything out of your life without replacing it with something better. And let me tell you, anything that God takes out of your life, recognize you didn't need it in the first place. Because God is not going to take it. He's already said that he's going to supply your needs according to his riches and glory. So if he know you need it, why is he going to take it away from you? So if God is trying to take it out of your life, apparently you do not need it. Stop holding on to it. Let God have it. So here it is. And we got to stop panicking. Stop fretting when stuff don't go our way. You know, we, we had like we had just like a, a child in a candy store when stuff don't go our way. You remember when your children was little, or maybe even now, and you, you go in the store, or you go in Walmart, and they go in the toy aisle, and they see a little, a little gun or something they want. I want that, I want it. You say, no, just fall out on the floor. You know, uh, maybe you ain't had them kind. You know, but uh, you seen them in the store. So the cop said, no, because I would have picked them up off the floor. But, uh, maybe they fell out on the floor and pound their stuff, and they'll throw tantrums because they don't get their way. You know, Christians throw tantrums as well. We throw tantrums all the time. Lord, why that ain't happening for me? Why are they going this way for me? Why are they having it here? Why are they having that? Just be glad that God is blessing you the way that he is blessing you. Be glad that God has put air in your lungs. Be glad that God has put you in your right mind. Be glad that God has given you the activity of your life. Glad that God has let you know you're going to from you're coming from. You got a reason to be grateful and thankful unto God. God knows how to bless us and when to bless us. He knows where you are. And that's the thing I love about God is with all the billions of people on this earth, God still can take time to identify with each and every single one of us with our individual issues. And can I tell you something? He don't have to put me on hold to come and deal with you what you got going on. But he can be dealing with you, can be dealing with me, can be dealing with you, 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 and you all at the same time. Who wouldn't serve a God like that? So, so manipulation, manipulation is, is born out of bitterness that lives in the heart of desperate people who feel like they gave up so much and got back so little. Now, Every time you get an opportunity, you're trying to work for something. Like you got to prove yourself. I got to let them know who I am. I got to let them know what I can do. You know, if people never recognize what you have your ability to do, that's all right. But as long as at the end of the day, God can look down on you and smile and say, my child, I'm pleased with what you're doing. That's all right. We got to stop looking for approval from people and seek approval from God. So here it is. He says, the Bible tells us that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth upon him should not perish but would have everlasting life. And if you can just stay with God, even when it don't seem fair, even when it don't seem like life is really working out for you, even when it looks like you're going backwards, Instead of going forward. Anybody know what I'm talking about? If, if you could just stay with God, I want to I, I tell you something else. Never let the devil see you sweat. Y'all see me sweat, but ain't none of y'all devils, I hope. You know, but <laughs> never let the devil see you sweat. Don't even act like you're lonely. Don't even act like you need anything. Don't even act like you're desperate. But just stand still and wait on the Lord. And while other people are trying to manipulate, I dare you to just become a true worshiper in your own life. For the Lord saw a woman at the well, and he said, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must, not can, that would suggest that you had an option, but you don't really have an option, must worship him in spirit and in truth. 
And can I tell you something? There's people all in this room this morning. But let me tell you something. There's a whole lot of folk who this morning, they've clapped their hands, but they don't really feel like they're true worshipers. Really don't feel like they're true worshipers. And I, I'll tell you, there are a lot of people, you wouldn't even notice it, there are a lot of people that come to church every Sunday. First one to clap their hands. First one to shout glory, hallelujah. First one to, to get in the service, but these are the main people that are broken. These are the main people that you don't know by the time they get to their car, they bawling their eyes out because they know that they got to go back to the reality that they are living in an actual hell in their life. That's why you got to treat people right. That's why it don't, it don't do you no harm to smile at nobody. It don't do you no harm to shake nobody's hand because you don't know that very smile, that very warm gesture just might have saved that person from going off the deep end. And here it is. We, and, we, and people, you, people do such a good job of putting on a facade and dressing up what they really have going on because they already know what they told you what they had going on. All of Duval County would know what they had going on. But I know somebody. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and our griefs to bear. Say what a privilege it is just to be able to carry everything, not something, but everything. That's our problem. We want to take some stuff to God and try and handle some stuff on our own. Carry everything to God in prayer. I remember when Sennacherib wrote King Hezekiah that threatening letter. And when he got the letter, he looked at it and seen these people coming down and destroy him. He said, I can't do that with that man in this army. So you know what that man did with the letter? It says that he went into the temple, spread it out before God. In other words, he said, God is your man. You get the Lord, you need uh, urgent. You need to read this. I can't do anything with it. He prayed. He gave that over to God. And the Bible says that in one night's time, God said, one angel. He didn't even get Gabriel. He didn't even get Michael. He just looked over the corner and said, hey, you go. And by the time the angel got through flapping his wings, the Bible said that 185,000 soldiers were dead because he took his problem to God. Can I tell you, you could have been got rid of certain situations in your life if you would have just carried it to God in prayer. First time you tried to fix it, it didn't work. Second, third, fourth, fifth time you tried to do it, it didn't work. Why not carry your troubles, why not carry your problems to God in prayer? And when you lay it down, don't go back and pick it up. You know, we, we type of people, we want to bury the hatchet, but we leave the hammer sticking out the ground. So when it's time to go back, we know if we're going to have too much trouble getting it back up. Leave it there with God and trust him to take care of it. I want to be a true worshiper in my life. Above everything, I want to be somebody that God can look at me and say that he is pleased with the worship that I offer him. I want to worship him for staying with me even when everybody else had left me. I want to worship him for standing by me when I didn't have anybody else by my side. I want to worship him for, for, for keeping me from losing my mind. I want to, and all of us have reason here that we can thank God. All of us have reason here why we worship God. And that is why it is so important that for so long, the church and all over the world, religion, we've talked so much about religion. Religion, religion, religion. When we left out relationships. And people have gotten so intertwined with all of the other stuff that they've forgotten that they themselves have to have a relationship with God. How can you tell a person to have a relationship with God? Because they depend on Sunday morning what the preacher is going to say for their Bible study for the week. No personal study in their life. No prayer life. No, no going before the throne of God in their personal life. But I want to be a true worshiper. I want to worship God in spirit and in truth. That is what we ought to be desiring on this morning. That is what this woman ought to have been desiring. If anything, she should have came to Jesus and said, can my sons follow you? Can, 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 can they be your disciples? 
Can they follow after you? Can they learn from you? Can you teach them? But no, she wanted to jump the gun. When you go into your kingdom, now, I don't want them to be crucified. I don't want them to be hunted down like dogs, like the rest of them going to be dead. I, I don't want them to be crucified. I don't want them to have to go through any of that. I just want, when you reign in your kingdom, I want one to be on your right hand, and I want one to be at your left. Bypass Calvary. And let's go straight to him. You can't do that. That's, the, that's what a lot of us really want, in a nutshell. That's what we want. We want to bypass the troubles of this life. We want God, here it is, Brother Coffee. we want God. When we come out the water, to dry us off real good, wrap us up in cotton, so we can go through life without ever getting hurt. We don't want to be talked about. Oh, they're talking about me. <laughs> good. <laughs> this and that. We don't, we don't want to suffer anything in life. But do you know even our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was talked about? You know, they spit in his face. You know, a lot of us in here be locked up, somebody spit in our face. A crown for him. Somebody say amen. He meant that amen. I heard it. So, even, even our Lord had a crown of thorns shoved down on his head. And, and, and I'm talking about the stuff that he did. None of the stuff that he had to go through, we can't even, we can't even touch that. Now, the, the stuff that we go through doesn't even matter when it talks about the sufferings that our Lord and Savior had to endure in order that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. What, what's, what's the meaning of this message, Brother Peterson? A lot of us we want to do good, but we want to do it for the wrong reason. We want to do work for God, and we want to serve God, but we don't want to do it so God can get the glory. We want to do it so we can get the glory. We want to do it so at the end of it, when we get to doing what we do, Brother Stars, folk will come up to us and say how proud they are of what we did, how proud they are of what we done, what we accomplished. But they ought to be said, look at what the Lord was able to do through you. Because if you realize anything that you do, you're not really doing it. But you're only doing it through the power that the Lord has given you. You remember when Pilate told Jesus, he said, he said don't you know that I got the power to take your life? Jesus said, <laughs> I believe Jesus laughed at that moment. The Bible don't say it, but I believe he chuckled a little bit. But and Jesus said, what? No man takes my life. No I lay it down. He said, if I lay it down, I got the power to take it back again. He said, the only power you got is what my daddy gave you. That's the only power you got is the power that my father gave you from on high. So church, let us be a people that when we do something for God, we're serious about it. Let us be wholehearted in what we do for God. Let's not do it for any shape, form, or fashion. But we do it so at the end of the day, our God can be glorified. So at the end of the day, whether you're teaching a Bible class or you're preaching the word of God, at the end of it, that some dying soul may walk out and say, I'm in sin. What I need to do in order that my soul might be saved. To live in such a way on your job, in your community, so that people will see the life that you are living. And come and say, hey, what church you go to? I know you got to be a Christian because you just live such a good life. Live in a way that people can see Jesus in you. Live it. That's, a lot of us, we can speak life, but we can't live the life. We can tell everybody else how they ought to live. But we just as raggedy in our personal life. Talking about the moat that's in our brother's eye. And can't see the plate that's in us. Talking about the few specks of dust in our, uh, in our brother's porch, but we got dust piled up to the, to the peephole in our door. When we serve God and when we do work for God, be serious about it. This is a song that says, let anything you do for Jesus, let it be real. Let it be. Y'all want to be real this morning? I want to be real with God. I, I don't want to be fake. I don't want to play because guess what? God is somebody I want to play with. Amen. Bible says, fear not the man that is able to kill the body, but fear him 
who's able to kill both the body and the spirit. That's God. You know, he got your life in his hands. And when your soul has departed from your body, it goes back into the hands of God. And according to the life that you have lived on this earth, he's going to send it to one or two places. Now, I, I, I had an hour-long conversation with an old high school friend of mine last night. He's a Catholic. And I've been talking with him for over the past three months. And I believe I got about him, brother. I believe I about got him. But, and every time he asked me, can he pray? Um, when we opened the Bible, I said, yeah, go ahead and pray. And at the end of it, he said, hail Mary and all that. So I said, thank you, Jesus. You know, in the name of Jesus, you know, praise God. <laughs> and, what I, and what I love about it, he, he came to me. When he didn't have my phone number. We weren't really that close in school or anything. But we were Facebook friends. And he would, I didn't know it, and you never know, people are watching you even when you don't know it. That's why you got to set an example, you got to make sure you're doing what's right, because people are listening. And apparently, he had went online, and he found one of my sermons, and he listened to it, and he inboxed me on Facebook, he said, hey, can you give me a call? And it started from there. And we've been having good conversations there, and he, and he called me back, hey man, you know, that sounded good, but let's look at this now. That sounded good, but let's look at this now. And I've got him now because he only brings the Bible to the discussion now. That's right. So now I can really work with him. Yeah. So, and, and, but I say that all to say, you never know how people are watching you, how people are listening to you. That's why you've got to set an example so that people can see Jesus in the life that you live. Amen. Your life is evangelism all by itself. All by itself. Amen. You can draw souls to Jesus simply by living the life of a Christian. Yes. My brother, my sister, time has been far spent. If you are here on this morning and you're not a child of God, you find yourself outside of the ark of safety. My brother, my sister, this is your day. Uh, it is not by accident, nor, nor by any mishap that you are here this morning, but it was God's design that you were here this morning for you to hear the word of God. Yeah, it's something about God. God knows to put you in the right place at the right time just for you to hear what it is that he wants for you to hear. God needed you to hear this, be here this morning. And I don't know, the message may have meant something for somebody, it may have meant something for somebody else. Right. But at the end of it, if one person yeah. has been touched, yeah. it, has done, it has done its job. Right. And if you are here this morning, if you're not a Christian, you find yourself outside the ark of safety, I want to first of all tell you, you'll see um, that we, we, this is the pulpit area. But th you, we, this isn't a tarrying officer. You, you, you can't come here and tear for the Holy Ghost. Um, the Holy Ghost came down A.D. 33 on the day of Pentecost. How, you know, the spirit came down. It only came down one time and it's been abiding forever. So we're not waiting for any more spirits to come. Jesus, Jesus said in Acts chapter 2 and verse number 38, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, the ever abiding presence of the spirit of God living on the inside of you. And, and, and it don't mean that you ain't got the Holy Spirit just because you don't speak in tongues and roll on the floor and convulse at the mouth and all that good kind of stuff, you know. But we've got the misconception. That because the world has made it seem like yeah. that's what it's all about, that we want to be like everybody. I ain't trying to be like everybody else. So. I'm trying to be what God wants me to, to be. be. And if you want to be saved, you need to be saved according to the Bible. You need to be saved according to the scripture. Even in the lowest churches now, you got folk that don't even give the invitation. They say, if you're here and you, you, you like Jesus to come into your heart and to make him Lord of your life, come down to the altar and we'll pray with you and all that. Yeah, it sounds good. And people say anything good to, to, to bamboozle and hoodwink you and get you to come in. We have gotten so far away from God's word and from truth just to please people. And to keep and to keep up this facade of what, oh, oh, we got this going on, that got going on. Well, I want what your word sound like. We got a school. What's your word sound like? We got a gymnasium. So do YMCA. What's your word sound like? So my brother, my sister, if you're here today and you're not a Christian, you come by hearing the word of God. Amen. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse number 17, says that faith come by what? Hearing. 
and hearing by the word of God. After hearing, you must believe that same word. After belief, you must repent of your sins. What is repentance? Repentance is a change of mind that produces a change in your action. After repentance, you confess with your mouth the sweetest name known to mortal tongue, and that is that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. And after confession, you are baptized with him for the remission of your sins. Have your sins washed away, done away with, never come up before you in this life and neither the life that is to come. But let me tell you, people will always hold a used-to-be mirror in your face after you become a child of God. But just know that God has forgotten it and God has forgiven you. And as long as you're all right with God, that's all that matters. So you need to become a Christian. You need to be saved. This may very well be the last opportunity that you have to hear the gospel message. This may very well be the last opportunity that you have to give your life to Jesus Christ. And as I started out, don't pass me by. Don't let it pass you by. Don't let this opportunity, you know if you need Jesus or not. Ain't nobody got to tell you. You know if Jesus is in your life or if he's not. If you not put him on in baptism, you need to do that today. You can do it now. Together we stand and sing the song of invitation.